Students' groups at several universities are demanding that the institutions reopen. This after campuses were closed following a violent protest. Hashtag keep Vits open supporters marched at Vits University in Johannesburg. They demand that students be allowed to complete the 2016 academic program. However, there were some clashes with students from the hashtag fees must fall movement in Port Elizabeth. The open NMMU movement is staging a silent protest daily until Friday. Nelson Mandela Metropolitan University closed the main campus 20 September after student protests. Students at WITS spoke to NN7 earlier. They want protests to move out of the campus so the university can carry on functioning and that teaching is not hampered. Okay, firstly, I want to say we're not a counter protest. We're not opposing the Feast Must Fall movement. We agree completely with them. We want free education. However, we are uh, disagreeing with the methods they have used in intimidating and bullying students from not attending lectures and finishing the year. The numbers are unknown as of yet. Uh, we have to see how everything fills up later. Yeah, so it's, today's, we have to be very careful how we play everything out with regards to the police and the FMF movement. But uh, if we, we watch ourselves and we all know exactly what we're going there with the right intention, we'll sh we should come out okay. Vitz has given us the go-ahead for this. Uh, there was no objection there, so they are aware that we are having a, another movement coming onto campus. Our memorandum is, as I said, we're not against the Fees Must Fall movement, just against their methods. Uh, we would like the protests to move off of campus to Union. That's where they'll get real attention. We just like, want to specify that we're not anti Fees Must Fall. We are entirely for Fees Must Fall. Most of the people that have gathered here stand to benefit from Fees Must Fall, as has been repeatedly emphasized by the Fees Must Fall movement. We just really want to finish the year, as for everyone to finish the year, and that way we feel that the Fees Must Fall movement will be a lot more successful if people have their degrees, and so that we can create an environment at WITS to accept, you know, we can accept matriculants next year, because if the university closes, there will be no room for matriculants to join. There will be no graduates to join you know, clinics and teachers, etc. There will be less of them in the world, and that is severely tragic. Well, there you have it. A lot of students seem to be on either side. Either you are a hashtag fees must fall, but not education is what they're saying. Uh, now, there's two groups basically that I've separated um, into the uh, two movements. And obviously, they want the academic year to continue so that they can graduate, especially I'm guessing those that are probably in the last year, whether it's their master's or their honors or whatever degree that it is that they are taking up on. And obviously, to have an intake of of the matriculants that will be coming in uh, through. Now, Fasia Hassan is on the line, who is the Secretary General. Thank you very much for joining us, um, Fasia, uh, uh, for, on the line. Hello, thank you for having me. Now, it seems that uh, there's two sides uh, to this movement now, the hashtag fees must fall and the others that are saying, yes, it must fall, but the education should not. Um, are we anticipating a smooth opening on Friday, the 10th of October? So the interesting thing is that when we try to engage the students really to understand what's going on, there seems to be some form of consensus on the realization of a free and quality education. So I don't think it's fair to say we're divided on those elements, which is really the fundamental core. But the one problem does come in, in, in the real tactics, I think, of how it's going to be realized. Um, and that's where the point and bone of contention remains. Ours is to say that it's easy to protest to so-called take back this when one comes from a more privileged background, or when one has access, when one doesn't really understand what's at stake here. And I think we also need to understand that they are not the silent majority. The real silent majority in this country are the millions of young people, black young people, who don't have access to education, who will not be able to walk into a university space, not because they don't have the skills or the ability, but by virtue of the fact that they are poor and disadvantaged. That is the real silent majority, and no one is fighting for them except for us. Mm -hmm. um, and in many ways, the voice of Fees Must Fall has become so much louder than just university students. Even now, as I speak to you, the South African Council of Churches, the Black Student Society, all of these prominent members of society have come through to say, we support this call, yes. Let us come to the table, let's discuss constructive solutions. I mean, even Praveen Gordon, the minister, has said that 
we've put on the table some very interesting ideas on modalities of how to, re, uh, how to really realize free education. And so in many ways, we are now in a space where we are discussing how we can realize it. And that's where the student movement has been wanting to go for such a long time. We're hoping that Friday is an important day for the movement. Um, it's a general assembly at Wits University in which all stakeholders will be present and will be able to contribute meaningfully, hopefully, um, to this kind of discourse. Now, just quickly, the, you, you seem to have come to a solution with this uh, management there, or the vice chancellor, shall I say. Um, I'm curious to find out exactly what uh, uh, agreement or rather solution have you come up with? Because at the end of the day, the fees haven't fallen, um, but yet they want to open the school. So in the meeting, what was uh, uh, um, basically underlined? What solution is there actually going to be? Uh, I was not in the meeting, but let me allude to, to, to what actually happened. So the first thing is that you're quite right. Um, WITS doesn't have the power to give free education. And by no means are we suggesting that. What we're saying is on a WITS level, our internal demands need to be addressed. But in addition to that, we want the university, through a historic general assembly, to take a stance on free and quality education and access thereof. That stance will then bind the university in ensuring that they assist us as the student movement in its realization. That's on a WITS level. On a national level, we are continuing discussions. Uh, we are hoping to meet with the presidency and the treasury later this week. Um, the South African Students Congress has also called for this meeting, and we're hoping that we'll be able to then present the model and come to some form of, um, maybe not an agreement necessarily, but come to form some form of in a space where we can talk about when we're going to implement in timelines. So two parallel processes are actually happening um, to assist the movement and assist fees must fall. Well, thank you very much. That was Fasia Hassan, Secretary General, SRC there for WITS. We also have our reporter, Calden Ongmu, who is on the ground there at uh, WITS University, who's been covering the story. Uh, Calden, thank you so much for joining us. Now, we heard the Secretary General from SRC basically say that uh, the uh, other movement, uh, which is where the students want to go back to school, is basically coming from a background that's more privileged. Would you say this is true? And is it mainly a thing of also race? Is it mainly white people... Uh, and that are privileged that are coming from this side. Oh, well, definitely, Nandi, this morning uh, when uh, hashtag Keep Wits Open students marched from the West Campus uh, uh, to the main campus here outside Great Hall, we did get uh, an opportunity to speak to those students, including uh, the student representative from that group of Keep Wits Open. Um, it was, uh, I, if I can uh, uh, no, distinguishly uh, say, that it was not more than 50 students participating there, mostly, most of them being white students. They're about three black uh, African students and about uh, two to three Asian students. Um, they were marching, and one of the students that was marching along with these, uh, with this particular group particularly said that he's not a privileged one. He's a black South African, just like the ones that are protesting here outside Great Hall. And he said he just wants to complete his degree. He wants to come out. He wants to graduate so that he can help his single, mo a single mother uh, financially. He says he cannot afford to lose uh, another year and he says as much as uh, they really support this whole cause this movement of fees must fall but at the same time the way students are protesting that's not the way they said students have to be strategic in the way uh, they take this movement forward they said they want classes to resume they want their constitutional rights to be heard they want to attend classes they want to graduate but at the same time they want to fight for this movement of fees must fall uh, but at this given point of time uh, point of time, Anandi, I can tell you the students are inside Solomon Matlangu House. They're caucusing amongst themselves. Uh, they are meeting internally uh, uh, to just chalk a plan forward on what's really going to take place. Uh, come Friday, uh, it is a general assembly. You heard from the student representative Fasiha Hassan also emphasizing that they want to cooperate with all the stakeholders and engage in a good faith with all the stakeholders, including WITS management. 
Well, thank you. That was Kelden Ongmu, our ANN7 reporter on the ground, basically highlighting that uh, the Keep Bits Open movement is quite small. Uh, they did march uh, this morning, and uh, she did highlight that, mo well, it's a small majority, well, it's a small uh, amount of students, rather, um, marching on that, uh, mainly white, uh, uh, as she mentioned, mainly privileged, but there are small groups of black, uh, rather, she said, three people that are black that are part of that movement, obviously, uh, wanting to finish their degrees there. Now, Wits University says academic programs would resume on Monday, 10 October. Management has confirmed the agreement made after negotiations with protesting student groups. Wits management said it does not want a repeat of the violent scenes that played out on the university's campus. The university said resumption and completion of the 2016 academic program is a key priority in the next few weeks. Management was now revising the academic calendar and developing a new examinations timetable. This also said it has the express commitment from all parties that there would be no violence or intimidation of students and staff and no destruction of property. Vitz reached an agreement with the students under three conditions. The academic program would resume on Monday, 10 October 2016. Police will be withdrawn from Vitz campuses and remain on the perimeter. All stakeholders would work together towards holding a general assembly on Friday, 7 October 2016. The senior executive team, uh, on request from the Black Student Society representatives and former SRC president, um, approached uh, Vitz management and said that they wanted to mediate between the student leaders and uh, Vitz management. Um, the executive management agreed to this and the mediation took place yesterday. Um, what happened was that people like uh, uh, Terry Tilani, Feroz Kachalya, Atskut Dalimpofu, and others uh, basically met with the students, listened to what they had to say, then came up, had a meeting with executive management, and they agreed on a way forward. The way forward, as you described just now, is that the university's academic program will be suspended until Monday, the 10th of October. In the interim, um, uh, we will work towards a common objective, that is towards holding a general assembly this Friday, the 10th of October. Um, this assembly means that all constituencies now need to go back and within their own constituencies, students, staff, alumni, council, senate, etc., they need to come up with a consensual position on the principle of access to higher education, what that means, etc. Once um, all the constituencies have had this discussion, they will come together on Friday in a general assembly, which will be held at Wits University. They will present their points there, and from there, the university will then make an issue, uh, will, will, will um, issue a statement. Now, this um, statement would be something uh, where the university is speaking on an issue of national importance, and in this case, it is that of access to education.